Welcome to the OZK Phone System Extended Edition video tutorial part 3. In this video I will show you how you can make a simple interactive voice response. For this purpose knowing WebPhone API and OZML is necessary. After having created your own IVR I will introduce the WebPhone extension to you. Using this extension you can customize your WebPhone with the help of the different access controls. First of all you need to open the previously created IVR extension. As I mentioned earlier, you can provide a given OZML script by clicking on the configure menu. OZML is an XML language which uses predefined commands. With this, you can create an IVR. For more information, please click on the link you can find in the description. The user input command executes command in the current API extension called specified between initial commands node by the time it waits for the user to press DTMF keys. The keys are between input nodes. The action to execute when the key pressed is specified between input nodes where the key value is a DTMF digit or digits for input nodes. You can add menu entries to it and give different commands to be executed by entering different menu entries. You can implement various solutions. For instance, you can build multi-level IVR menu systems by nesting more user input commands into each other or you can also make client identification systems by sending out DTMF entered notification to a URL and the response OZMA can contain a blind transfer command which sends the client directly to the software staff. Now this speaks the four sentences between the initial commands nodes repeatedly with a 10 seconds delay and scans the press number at the same time. The delay is a perfect command to insert pauses between speak commands to make the spoken text easier to understand for the client. In this case, by pressing 1, an SMS will be sent. By pressing 2, that sentence will be read by the speak engine. And by pressing 3, you will be blind transferred to number 101. The blind transfer command is commonly used when the IVR can't answer the customer query, so the customer is transferred to the help desk staff. It also has a great usage when making a callback request. At the callback request, the customer sends his phone number to the company. The phone rings on the company's side, a member of the support staff picks it up and she or he gets blind transfer to the customer. Now, if the transfer was unsuccessful, it says sorry but blind transfer failed to extension 101. The OZML script is complete. Now, all you have to do is to make DTMF sending possible on your website. I will use the previously written click to call example program. First of all, you will need buttons so that the input of DTMF can be done. Please create a few buttons under the call button. Secondly, you should create a function for the pushing of the mouse button and one for the release of this button. The values of the DTMF should be given to these functions. If the micro object does not equal to null, the sending of DTMF will start as you push the button. For the release of the button, it should stop. You can do all this by using the start DTMF sending and stop DTMF sending methods of your call object. Afterwards, all you need to do is to call these functions to the events of the buttons and provide the proper value for the given button. Now let's do the test call. System ETIDR. To send an SMS, press 1. To do nothing, press 2. To transfer the call to 101, press 3. You press button 2. You did nothing. Welcome to the OZT phone system ETIDR. To send an SMS, press 1. Everything works well. In the case of those web phone outside lines that we use up to now, making outbound calls is not possible for security reasons. Since with a bit of JavaScript knowledge, anyone can affect the way it works. However, if you still wish to make such calls, you can do so. You should install the web phone extension. It works in a similar manner to the other ones. The sole difference is that in this extension, all calls are allowed. This means that you can make calls to outside telephone networks as well. Authentication is necessary prior to its use. 
The Web Phone extension was created mainly for the employees of companies. In order for you to be able to use this, you should install it first. Now the configuration panel of the Web Phone extension can be seen. You need to enter a telephone number that will be assigned to the Web Phone extension. This number will be used in the dial and forward calls coming to or made by your client application. After entering the number, you need to provide a password for this extension, which is at least 8 consists of characters. Then you need to choose the type of the extension. If you want to create your own web phone, you should choose the developer friendly version, but if you don't want to create a custom one, just pick the web phone with keep adoption. If you configured your web phone, click on the OK button. Now you are ready to test your web phone extension. Click on the test web phone link on the left and provide your web phone username and password. The username will be the phone number of the web phone. It will connect to your PBX and you will be able to call. Now I will show you how you should modify the first example using JavaScript in order to be able to use this web phone extension. For the second parameter of the connect method, you should set the phone number of the web phone extension and for parameters you should provide the password or the authentication ID. You will receive this authentication ID after you have logged in once. This is a generated ID. If you store it in cookies, providing your password each and every time will not be necessary. This way you can create a remember me functionality. If a valid authentication ID can be found in cookies, you will not need to provide your password over and over again. In the present scenario, for the sake of simplicity, I store the password in a variable. The program can ask for the password in various ways. For instance, it can do so with the help of a JavaScript pop-up window. You should test whether it works or not. It works well. Now, if you provide an invalid password, you will be in access denied state. As a result, you will not be able to make calls. Let's test this. If you wish to have settings for customized access controls, you can do so by using HTTP API. With this, you can generate a token. This token is used to authenticate and define the privileges of the connecting client. These privileges control what functions can the client call from the JavaScript API. Example modify sessions, query call history information, etc. If you click on the send request button on the test interface of HTTP API, you will receive a security token. With the help of this token, you will be able to connect to Azeke Phone System Extended Edition through JavaScript API with the access controls you set on the interface of HTTP API. For demonstration, I will copy this token. This token is generated by HTTP API and you will receive this token using HTTP requests. You should provide this in JavaScript code as the second parameter of the connect method. I will log the connection establishment process so that I can show you that the security token works properly. Let's test this. Afterwards, when you make a call, you will be able to see that the access controls you provided on the website will be the same as the ones you have at HTTP API in Ozaki Phone System Extended Edition. For more information on HTTP API, please visit our website. You can find this link in the description. Now, we are at the end of this video tutorial series. For more information, please visit at ozakiphone.com and feel free to contact us at info at Thank you for watching.